Hey, this is Brian Wright from fitin.com, P-H-I-T-I-N.com, and this is the Daily B episode 89. What am I talking about? The reality that there is no competition. Hey, it's Brian, and I'm talking about competition. And the reason I'm talking about this is because I took my son in to get a haircut yesterday, uh, and it's next to a martial arts school. So I walk into the place, whatever, uh, my second time being there, but I haven't been there literally in two and a half years. So I uh, take my son in, he gets a haircut, lady starts asking me questions about me, what do I do, whatever I tell her. And then she's like, wow, uh, do you have a lot of competition in the area? And I said, no, I actually don't. She goes, yeah, but there's a ton of fitness places, martial arts places, all in Ocean Township. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but... I don't really believe in competition. I believe the marketplace is big enough for all of us and that it's kind of stupid that we all look at each other as enemies in competition when we're just people that are doing what we do and there are people more than enough in our town to populate all of our places and to populate the place that fits their needs best. And as a business owner, it blew her away because she was like, I've never actually thought about business that way. And honestly, the only time you run into competition when it comes to business is if you're directly being attacked by somebody. If somebody is on, uh, you know, some kind of pricing war against you, and this happens more in retail businesses than it does in service-based martial arts businesses where people will play with the numbers, but the service aspect of what we do versus a lot of traditional retail models is different. So it's not like in a fitness martial arts business, I'm selling toasters where Walmart might have it for eight bucks and Kohl's will have it for 12 bucks. So I'm going to go with Walmart. You know, it's, that's a same, same product where what we're doing is a human based deal so that the product that we do We can all do the same actual physical skills, but because we're unique individuals that are delivering these skills, it changes. So you can have, just in my location, you could have five other martial arts schools in the same building as me, and we could all be saying that we teach, let's say, karate or kickboxing, easier, kickboxing. Everybody can say they're doing kickboxing, but because we're individuals that are teaching kickboxing, based upon our experience, our service is different. And our service being different provides different flavors and tastes for the community. So some people may subscribe to A, others to B, others to C, and so on and so forth. So the job is not so much to be competitive in terms of, uh, you know, I hate you because you're not me. The, the deal is to be yourself as authentically as possible so people have a true understanding of who you are. And then when it comes down to competition on the, on the talking crap about each other side of it, if you are a good instructor, if you're very good at what you do and you provide a positive experience, you are counteracting the negative talk. Look, back in 1998, I had a hammer house for a gym. I was a full contact karate instructor and... We used to break people in hard. I'm not going to lie. Our gym was a rough spot. And people used to say, we're a rough spot. And they were saying it as a negative where I was like, no, that's who we are. That's a positive for me. I was who I was. And you knew exactly what you were getting into when you walked in my doors. I'm not going to say we're not a hammer house, but I have different levels of programming for different people. But it's still within the same vein in which I teach whatever. And it is what it is. And I am who I am, and I communicate that very clearly. I don't aspire to be something different. I don't aspire to get you in to get your money with a false sense of what we're doing, wrap you up in a contract, and hope you don't come back. I want to have an authentic experience that we can build on so that you get value for your money. And then you bring in other like people, and our community grows, and then we have a lot of activity, which creates you know a solid, long-standing business. And that's what – this is where you can go when you get out of the competitive mindset. So – The guy who is actually next to the place my kid got his hair cut is known as a little bit of a dick because he pretty much hates everyone and he talks bad about everyone. And I'm not talking poorly about him with what I'm about to say, but I'm just going to show you the perspective in which he speaks from. So this is a guy who started training like two years before I opened my first school. Like the guy opened up his first school within nine months of training with his instructor. And he doesn't have a big pedigree. 
He's never competed, which is fine. I don't think everyone has to compete in any in everything to be good at what they do. But so a little bit of training, no competitive career, never produced any real competitors, was always based on the the marketing based philosophy idea of getting people in. Um, it's a bit of a mind F instead of it is a physical program. So he comes and sees a guy like myself. And again, I'm not saying better, greater, whatever. As business people, we are who we are. We run our businesses. As martial artists, we're in different worlds. I've traveled internationally. I competed and trained in 13 different countries in every state but Alaska and Hawaii. I started training in 1980. I am a lifelong martial artist. I'm 42 years old. I've competed for world titles and I've created world champions. From the competitive side of it, you really can't mess with my pedigree. I've been everywhere from the UFC and Strike Force and K1 and Glory and all these things, which is fine, but bring it back to my local business. I've also dealt with thousands of people with absolutely complete different walks of life and I've consistently gotten results with people I work with and I'm good with it. I have no no um, reservations or hesitations in talking about who I am and what I do because I've kind of been there and done that. And then I take this local yokel guy who's world famous within the you know thousand square feet of his school and has never really been anywhere or done anything. And then he starts throwing stones at anyone who's done anything, and he comes up with every excuse in the world why my experience and other instructors like myself that I've experienced are bad because of that experience. You know, we're too, we're too hard. We have an unpractical understanding. We lack practicality, basically. So the guy basically, he's just come up with a laundry list of reasons why it's okay for him to have limited training and limited experience, which is fine. That's his ego talking. But if he would stop hammering other people, he would have a better reputation and maybe his adult class wouldn't have four people in it. The guy makes his business teaching kids and he basically sells parents because the kids don't know what the hell they're doing. And he sells parents on the idea of what he can do for kids. But he doesn't have adults because adults are a little bit more educated and they hear what he has to say and they say, you know what? He's not really authentic. He doesn't have the pedigree to back up the level of experience I'm looking for, and that's why his adult programs suffer. So as a business person, the guy drives a really nice car and lives in a really big house, and he makes a lot of money, and that's fine. But he still has a lack of satisfaction because his training is subpar, and you know his ego lets him know that. So I applaud the amount of money he's been able to make. I applaud the fact that he's made a life. He's put kid through college, and you know he's actually done a lot of good things for a lot of kids. I wish you would just embrace that. I wish all of us would embrace who we are and what we do and stop throwing stones at the guy next to us and acting like because someone else is different than us, they have to be bad. It's not your enemy. If we would work together more, we could create more of a, a, a group think. And when I honestly have no problem and I've done it and you can – there are people that I can probably tag on this where they'll, they'll say this. I've had people come through my door and I've recognized that my school is not right for them. So I've actually given them the contact information for other schools in my area that I think would fit their needs better because I don't want your money to make you dissatisfied. I want your money if I can give you results because I'm honest. I'm straightforward. I'm not going to BS you. And I also understand that every person that's upset – is going to tell everyone that they know that they're upset. But maybe one out of a hundred happy people are going to say why they're happy. So for me, as a business person, I have to make a lot more people happy than I do upset to create a positive vibe in my community. So one bad experience, one person that I just take their money knowing that I can't provide what they're looking for and I just take their money and I waste their time, it's going to take me a hundred people to come through my door before I can get enough information to counteract that one bad experience. So it's better for me to be honest and not have enemies and to just, you know, really go deep on the value that I provide for the customers that I've got. And that's my greatest advice to everybody. I, you know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, there's a lot of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu schools. You guys, most of you run them like your gangs. Like literally, if someone goes and trains somewhere else, they're a trader. If someone, you know, just goes and cross trains somewhere else, they're a trader. Forget about it. If they leave you, then there's a chance you run into them in a bar, you're going to hurt them. It's ridiculous. We're all adults. We pay money to do the services that we do. And if someone's paying you to get something, give it to them, and that's all. It's a transactional-based relationship. All your family crap is BS because the minute they stop paying, they're not family to you anymore. So I don't know any family that is based on payment. 
Family is based on blood, honor, respect, loyalty, all that kind of stuff. So if you want family, stop taking money, run it out of your garage, and you know come up with some crazy loyalty thing. But if you're running a business that demands money, man, this ain't family. And uh, this is not something that you have to like threaten someone's uh, ability to function over because you're unhappy. So we've got to really understand that the marketplace is the marketplace and the consumer is going to go where he's going to be best served. So instead of looking at each other as enemies, why don't we just put ourselves into the marketplace, our most authentic self, allow people to make decisions as adults, allow us to communicate as a professional adult with other adults and to do real transactions and to provide real services and stop with that big chunk of time we waste crap talking to other people in our business. It's a huge waste of time, and it's actually a huge turnoff to students. I had a friend of mine who's opening a school now. He's based in Philly, and Philly is a very political scene. And you have a lot of people that just choose not to train anymore because the politics are so disgusting in that town. You know, So don't kill your industry by caring so much about insider garbage in your industry and personally attacking people that are just different from you. That's just an easy way to get through life. You know, try and have a little empathy towards the needs of people and understand that different is okay. Just because someone's not like you doesn't mean they're bad. So that's my rant of the day. Um, I went a little longer than I intended, but it's a it's an important issue. We've got to realize that we are one community with a massive talent pool. This is a twenty nine point five billion dollar industry in North America alone. So when we're sitting here acting like we have this very small school of fish to pull from, it's really not true. Look at the demographics of your community and look at how many people actually exist and could benefit from what you do. Then look at all the other schools in your area. If you divided up your community into all of these schools, you wouldn't have enough room in all these schools to service everyone. So just put yourself out there authentically and allow the people to come to you that are actually going to benefit from you. Explain why, not what. Tell them why they should train with you. Tell them how you have the answers. Don't just say what you are and what you do. And then people will make real decisions Then you don't have to have enemies and you can have honest relationships with your students and you can actually be friends with other martial artists without having the ego and attitude BS in between and sitting around and fighting over what works and what doesn't work. Maybe you could actually learn something from the guy that you're throwing stones at. You know, maybe you can expand the sphere of influence that you've got. Maybe you guys can exchange things in a way that's better for both of you and attracts more people because people realize you're not dicks. You're actually normal, well-adjusted, real dudes. All right, I'm out.